Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, uh, the grandmother charged with murder in connection with the death of a 10-year-old Bangor boy was in court today. 56-year-old Misty La Tourette was indicted by the Penobscot County Grand Jury. La Tourette was arraigned on a charge of depraved indifference murder earlier today in court. Do you understand the charge? Yes. How do you wish to plead? Guilty. Not guilty, please, Edgar. Braxton Smith was taken to a local hospital with life-threatening injuries back in February, and despite life-saving effort, he died. The medical examiner's office ruled his death a homicide. According to court records, Braxton had repeatedly been restrained with zip ties for hours in his home. An autopsy also showed injuries consistent with battered child syndrome. La Tourette is being held at the Penobscot County Jail. Members of a national organization advocating for proper treatment of serious brain disorders have sent recommendations to the commission investigating the Lewiston mass shooting. The National Shattering Silence Coalition sent a letter to the commission outlining three recommendations they say could help prevent similar events from happening in the state. The recommendations revolve around fully implementing the Progressive Treatment Plan law that was passed more than 20 years ago. The law allows law enforcement officers and judges to force someone suffering from a serious mental illness to get treatment for their illness under a court order. John Nutting is the former state senator who sponsored the legislation and now advocates for the National Shattering Silence Coalition. We are respectfully asking the Lewiston Commission to broaden the scope of their work, to look at the shortcomings of Maine's mental health system so that more people can be placed on treatment plans, court order treatment plans if they have no awareness of their illness quicker before they commit homicides. And we're going to be pointing out that uh, Robert Card in August or September easily met all the qualifications to be on Maine's uh, progressive treatment plan. Nutting adds, despite progressive treatment plans being available to law enforcement for more than 20 years, they are rarely used by police due to a lack of training on the subject. The city of Old Town has named a new police chief. Chief David White previously served a population of around 14,000 people for 27 years at the Hanover Township Police Department in Hanover, New Jersey. Chief White expressed his enthusiasm for, the, for his new role, saying in part, quote, I look forward to working closely with the community to build on the strong foundation already in place and to foster an environment of trust and collaboration, end quote. The Old Town Police Department has been without a police chief since Scott Wilcox stepped down in December of 2023. In a statement, Old Town City Manager Bill Mayo welcomed White, saying in part, quote, Chief White's vision for modern policing and community engagement aligns perfectly with our goals for the future of Old Town. We believe his leadership will be instrumental in the continued safety and security of our residents, end quote. Chief White will assume that new role officially on August 1st. Today, the Maine State Police honored troopers, civilians, and law enforcement students who've gone above and beyond for the safety of their community. Our Callie Warren has the story. 23 was a, a truly unbelievable year. On Friday, state troopers honored those that excelled in responding to calls for service last year. The Maine Criminal Justice Academy in Vassalboro hosted the annual awards ceremony, where recognition was given to both officers and community members. Two civilians were recognized for their efforts restraining an armed person in a post office. Uh, when we entered the post office, uh, the gentleman was at the front counter, obviously angry. Jess had sent something to him. Um, he turned around and went to go swing at Jess and then you know, subdued him. You know, when he took out the knife, we obviously weren't going to let him harm our postmaster. I think that was the, the most important part, that nobody was going to get hurt. Some future officers took home scholarships to support their education with a special award for young women. Being in a male-dominating field will definitely be a challenge, but with all the hard work and dedication that I'm willing to put in, I know that I will be taken seriously. Retired Sergeant Joe Poirier won the Legendary Trooper Award. The award started in 1985 and, and uh, I believe that I'm the 37th person to get this award. 
some of those were in that audience. They're just outstanding people and, and people that I would truly want to follow. And, and I'm so glad that I was able to get it as well. At the event's close, Detective Justin Huntley was honored with the 2024 Charles Black Trooper of the Year Award. Our investigators carry caseloads that only seem to increase. So thank you all for what you do. Thank you for letting me tag along for the ride. And thank you all today for being here and for listening. In Vassalboro, Callie Warren, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Bangor City Council recently adopted an ordinance change to increase the maximum height for buildings in two service districts. Brought forth by the city's planning board, the updated ordinance is a small step in the direction of making housing both affordable and available. Our Doug Banks has the story. A developer at one point said, like, it's really hard to make it um, multifamily affordable. That's four stories or below. We thought, let's go a little bit beyond four stories, but we don't want it to go too high and make it um, really out of scale with the current development in Bangor. On Monday, Bangor City Councilors approved a change to its ordinance on maximum height for buildings, amending it to 60 feet if the building is located on a lot that fronts a major or arterial street. It's a change specifically for business districts in a few other areas of the city, where the maximum height was either 35 or 45 feet. In the 90s, the zoning um, tried to kind of impose like single family on all those urban neighborhoods. And um, so we're kind of <laughs> we're kind of trying to um, deal with that now because, you know, we want more multifamily in those areas close to downtown. Brought forth by the planning board. The ordinance change is just one piece of their comprehensive plan, which Colette says they're looking to implement soon. This measure was really just kind of a stopgap measure until we get to that bigger process. Their comprehensive plan aims to rewrite the city's land development code, remove zoning barriers, all with the goal of having more affordable housing available in Bangor. Council has declared it the year of housing. We are in a housing crisis, and so we were just like, this is one more thing we can do to kind of enable more housing. In Bangor, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Secretary of State Shenna Bellows announced the final wording of a referendum question regarding proposed limits on campaign funding. The Citizens Initiative is an act to limit contributions to political action committees that make an independent expenditures. Now, the final wording on that question will read, do you want to set a $5,000 limit for giving to political action committees that spend money independently to support or defeat candidates for office? Secretary Bellows received 11 comments on the proposed ballot question during the 30-day public comment period, which was open from April 30th through May 30th. The secretary says those comments were taken into consideration when drafting the final language of the question. The Citizens Initiative question will appear on the November ballot. Well, calling all artists and graphic designers, the Maine Secretary of State's office wants your help to create the new design of the Maine state flag that Mainers will ultimately vote on in November. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard has the details. Happy Flag Day, everyone. In celebration of Flag Day, Secretary of State Shanna Bellows announced a design contest for the model flag of the potential new state flag on Friday. But this duty bestowed upon me by the legislature is not a job I can do alone. That's why I invite every Mainer to consider submitting a design for the model state flag to the Secretary of State for consideration. The original Maine state flag flew from 1901 to 1909 before it was replaced by our current flag. It featured a blue north star and a pine tree on a buff background. Those are the same requirements artists must stick to when designing their submissions. The design must include a blue north star and a green pine tree on a buff background. The design cannot contain any words or any elements other than the green pine tree and the blue north star. The creator of the design must be willing to grant rights to the design to the state of Maine. And while I will select a model design as I'm required to do by law, ultimately voters will decide when they go to vote in November. Kate McBrien, the Maine State Archivist, says from a historical standpoint, it's interesting that we're going back to the original design requirements. It shows me how much Mainers are very interested in their history and really connected to that historical culture um, that really separates us from so many other states. The contest will run from June 14th through July 19th at 5 p.m. Secretary Bellows hopes to announce the winner and have a model flag presented to the Adjutant General of the Maine National Guard by sometime in August. 
in Augusta. I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. So it'll certainly be exciting to see the designs that we're ultimately deciding on. Yeah, and it's yeah. really cool that Mainers are going to have a, a say in, in that final design. As they should. Yes, they should. All right. Well, let's go ahead and uh, hit pause here. We'll peek outside and get a first check of our forecast. Thank you, guys. Tonight's first weather is brought to you by Pet Care by Lindsay. Pet Care by Lindsay is an in-home pet care provider servicing the greater Bangor, Waterville, Ellsworth, Bar Harbor, and Mid-Coast areas. All right, let's take a look at that weather we got in the area right now in the region. We do have some thunderstorms just moving east over uh, just north of Bangor and a small cell going just south of Bangor as well, bringing some locally heavy rainfall. Other than that, nothing too severe in the area. For tonight, looks like the lows are going to get around the mid 60s for tonight, and then they will also reach into the upper 50s in the early morning hours. Going into your overnight planner tonight, looks like it's going to be a cloudy night with temperatures in the low 60s and then reaching the upper 50s by the early morning hours. All right, so another warmer overnight on the way for us. Yeah, it sure looks like it. All right, thank you, Jason. So to come on Fox 22 News at 10, the Kanduska Historical Society hosted a contest to design a new flag. We'll have a look at the new design and the contest winner. And the Supreme Court rules that the federal government is unable to ban bump stocks. That ban was put in place after one of the deadliest mass shootings in American history. Well, the stories and more local news when we come back. Someone needs to customize and save hundreds with Liberty Mutual. Wait, there's an elevator? Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. Our biggest challenge? Uncertainty. Hidden fees, surcharges, who knows what to expect. Turn shipping to your advantage. Keep it simple with clear upfront pricing. With USPS Ground Advantage. Depression is a journey. I'd made some progress on my antidepressant, had some daily wins in reducing my symptoms, but I was still masking my depression. So I talked to my doctor. She told me I could build on my wins without changing my antidepressant. Rexalti, when added to an antidepressant, significantly reduced depression symptoms more than an antidepressant alone. And less depression, that's a win. Rexalti can cause serious side effects. Elderly dementia patients have an increased risk of death or stroke. Antidepressants may increase suicidal thoughts and actions and worsen depression in children and young adults. Report new or sudden changes in mood, behavior, thoughts, or feelings, or if you develop suicidal thoughts or actions. Report fever, stiff muscles, and confusion, which can be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death. Weight gain, increased cholesterol, low white blood cells. Unusual urges, dizziness on standing, falls, seizures, trouble swallowing, or sleepiness may occur. Keep moving forward. Ask your doctor about Rexulti. Angler's Restaurant with two locations in Newport and Searsport. Open daily from 11 to 8. We are your home for fresh seafood. Our specialty is scallops, lobster, fish and chips, and of course, lobster rolls. Now, if seafood is not your preference, we offer fan favorites like cheeseburgers and chicken tenders. Stop by for the atmosphere and stay for the incredible dining experience. Anglers, Maine's family seafood restaurant. Judge leads the Yankees against Devers and the rival Red Sox, or the Rangers battle the Mariners. Baseball Night in America, Saturday at 7 Eastern on Fox. Randy, hit it! Fox Mondays, dance along. The place is on fire. Play along. Free bird! That is correct! And sing along. Ah, hitting high notes she never knew she had. Name that too. All new Mondays on Fox. Welcome back. As warmer temperatures draw us and our furry friends outdoors, veterinarians are issuing a reminder that we aren't the only ones at risk of contracting a tick-borne disease. Our David Ledford has more from a local vet on how to keep your pets safe. First and foremost is to protect your pets. Tick season is well underway, and associate veterinarian Chelsea Niehoff says she's already seen several cases of Lyme disease and other tick-borne illnesses in dogs over the last few weeks, along with a steady increase over the years. 
from when I first started to now, there's a huge number of Lyme cases compared to back then. We've seen a huge uptick in anaplasmosis in the area. When a dog contracts a tick-borne disease, it can sometimes be fatal, which is why veterinarians say that prevention is essential. We have a liquid that is absorbed into the skin, and those physically keep the ticks off of the skin. Oral flea and tick is the best product on the market. I've actually started recommending putting a Soresto brand Soresto collar on the pet as well. There is also a Lyme vaccine for dogs and Niehoff says this helps to train their immune system to fight the disease. However, the Lyme vaccine doesn't actually prevent Lyme disease. Which is why it's important to watch out for early warning signs. Unlike humans, dogs don't show the distinctive bullseye rash at the sight of a deer tick bite. <laughs> You'll actually see like a bug bite kind of reaction on the skin and they could not be eating very well. They can start limping. Um, they can also just be really dumpy, not really wanting to get up. Niehoff says Lyme disease is unlikely to be a problem for cats, but still recommends using flea and tick products to prevent tick bites. For more information to protect your pets, visit our website. In Brewer, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. So important to protect our fur babies. All right, well, the town of Kenduskeg celebrated Flag Day in a very special way today. They dedicated the town's new flag, which was created by a local child. The town's historical society hosted a contest to design a new flag last November, and 12-year-old Gabriella Weeks created the chosen design, which represents key features of the town. The flag that Gabriella designed has a white pine tree representing the uh, lumbering industry and the mills of Kenduskeg in the 1860s to 1900. Hmm. A very clean a, design. Yeah, there. I like that a lot. Yeah, it looks great. And great to see that, you know, a young person in the town kind of stood up and got involved and, you know, now look at the influence she's had. Right, and getting that recognition. That's Fantastic. great. Fantastic. Well, coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, more fighting erupting along Israel's northern border. This news comes as American diplomats try to save the latest ceasefire proposal. And as the fighting continues in eastern Ukraine, news of a potential peace proposal from Putin was quickly rejected. Those stories and more when we come right back. It's time to bring the family and friends to Fort Knox. One of the best preserved and most accessible Civil War forts in the nation is right in our backyard, just off Route 1 across from Bucksport. Open every day, May through October, rain or shine. Check our website for details. Refine, your local expert in window and door installation, carpentry repairs, and commercial facilities management. At Refine, we're proud to offer Maine-made Paradigm windows crafted with care and precision to ensure quality and durability like no other. From quaint cottages to bustling businesses, let us refine your space with our signature main made touch. Trust Refine to exceed your expectations every time. Contact us today and let Main Main Craftsmanship elevate your home or business. Rise with Refine. Want to leave works all day so I can keep working my magic. Just want to leave. 12 hours of uninterrupted pain relief. Aleve, who do you take it for? And for fast topical pain relief, try Aleve-X. Upset stomach? Iberogast. Indigestion? Iberogast. Bloating? Iberogast. Thanks to a unique combination of herbs, Iberogast helps relieve six digestive symptoms to help you feel better. Six digestive symptoms, the power of nature. Iberogast. Do you have a wet basement, nasty crawl space, settling foundation, sinking concrete, or clogged gutters? I'm Tony Hafford with TC Hafford Basement Systems, all things basementy. For over 30 years, thousands of homeowners throughout Maine and southeastern New Hampshire have trusted TC Hafford. Basement waterproofing, crawl space repair, stabilizing foundations, concrete leveling, and gutter installation. Call TC Hafford Basement Systems for all things basementy. Noah's Ark Food and Ice Cream is open for business. Located five miles off exit 244 in Medway, you will find affordable prices on all of your favorites. We offer homemade pizza, mouth-watering cheeseburgers, lobster rolls, scallops, and the local favorite is our sweet sausage sub. We also have kid-friendly meals and offer fresh doughboys and ice cream year-round. Noah's Ark Food and Ice Cream. Stop by for a delicious bite to eat and dessert too.
Did you know that the Penobscot Narrows Bridge Observatory is the tallest in the world with the fastest elevator in New England and 360 degree views from 420 feet up? Open every day, May through October. Check our website for details. If you've been injured, call Joe. The law officers of Joe Bornstein. The Supreme Court says the federal government cannot ban so-called bump stocks. The Trump era ban was put in place after the deadliest mass shooting in American history. Fox's Rich Edson is in Washington with more on the court's decision. In the deadliest mass shooting in American history, a lone gunman opened fire on a Las Vegas music festival in 2017, killing 60 people and injuring more than 400. The shooter fired more than a thousand rounds thanks to devices like these, bump stocks. They substantially increase the firing rate of a semi-automatic weapon. And in Washington today, the Supreme Court, in a 6-3 to three ruling, said the administration cannot ban them. This is a huge victory for the NRA and other gun rights groups. The ATF, under President Trump, banned bump stocks following the Las Vegas shooting, effectively classifying them as machine guns. A Texas gun store owner sued, saying the agency overstepped its authority. Writing for the majority, Justice Clarence Thomas said, quote, A bump stock is not a machine gun because it does not fire more than one shot by a single function of the trigger, which is how Congress has defined a machine gun since 1934. This limits the ability of the ATF to adopt broader definitions to accomplish limitations that Congress has not approved. In her dissent, Justice Sonia Sotomayor said the majority's artificially narrow definition hamstrings the government's efforts to keep machine guns from gunmen like the Las Vegas shooter. The decision leaves any potential ban on bump stocks up to Congress. And on Capitol Hill, there's mixed opinions on how to proceed. It's a strong statement and still continue to protect the sports Second Amendment rights, so I'm glad the court did it. So the Supreme Court is crippling our ability to combat the epidemic of gun violence. In a statement, President Biden criticized the Supreme Court for striking down what he calls an important gun safety regulation and called on Congress to pass a bump stock ban. In Washington, Rich Edson, Fox News. Looking abroad now, more fighting in Israel's north as American diplomats scramble to save the latest ceasefire proposal. Fox's Alex Hogan has more on that from London. The escalation along Israel's northern border continued Friday with dozens of missiles fired from Lebanon into towns and cities that have been under siege for months. It's Hezbollah's response to an Israeli airstrike on a three-story residential building in Lebanon late Thursday. These cross-border attacks have become more common in recent days, and they're leading to fears that the fighting could grow into a regional conflict. The town of Kiryat Shmona was hit the hardest on Friday, but it's been largely evacuated since the start of the war. About two months ago, we were here. There was a rocket strike exactly in this house, and today, unfortunately, another one in the same house from a different angle. The fighting up north comes as the U.S. and other allies are scrambling to revive the ceasefire process. The White House says it's, quote, disappointed that Hamas wouldn't sign on to the latest proposal to end the fighting, saying that it missed an opportunity to build momentum toward a broader peace agreement. There was going to be a negotiation to get from phase one to phase two. Why not start phase one and get a ceasefire and stop the suffering? And then you can debate those issues. President Biden is discussing the proposal with world leaders, the G7 summit, acknowledging the difficulty of bringing both sides together. Are you confident it's going to be done soon, sir? I haven't lost hope, but it's going to be tough. On Friday, a Hamas spokesperson admitted that the militant group does not know exactly how many hostages are still alive. In London, Alex Hogan, Fox News. Meanwhile, Vladimir Putin offered Ukraine a peace proposal that was immediately shot down today. Fox's Griff Jenkins has more. With the fighting in eastern Ukraine largely remaining a stalemate, Vladimir Putin is trying a new round of diplomacy. The Russian president floating a new peace proposal on Friday, calling for an immediate halt to the Russian offensive in exchange for the withdrawal of Ukrainian troops from areas already controlled by Moscow and an end to Ukraine's NATO membership process. Russia is offering an option that will make it possible to really end the war in Ukraine. We're urging to turn this tragic page of history and to begin restoring step-by-step -step relations of trust. 
But the Ukrainians call that a non-starter. And even with fighting intensifying along the Eastern Front, they say they're in a good position to stage a counteroffensive in the summer. It was not a serious attempt to agree on peace and had no relevance to any negotiations. There is no possibility to find compromise. The new diplomatic push by Russia comes as NATO defense ministers meet in Brussels, with the alliance saying it will now take point in coordinating military aid to the Ukrainians, an attempt to give Europe more responsibility as political Political uncertainty grows here in Washington. But Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin says the new arrangement doesn't mean the U.S. is ending its commitment to Ukraine. And the United States stands behind NATO's continued support. And our allies and partners will stand by Ukraine for the long haul. Today's announcement comes just a day after President Biden signed a 10-year bilateral security agreement with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. In Washington, Griff Jenkins, Fox News. All right, and we've got much more coming up after the break. We do. Stay with us. This June, it's the summer of stars as the U.S. hosts the world's best players from Copa America, USA, Bolivia, June 23rd on Fox. Hello, fellow flyers. I'm the savvy traveler, here to share the secrets of convenience at Bangor International Airport. Parking, you're steps away from the terminal. Inside, even more conveniences, and friendly, efficient security. All of these make BGR the official airport of you. Remember, the savvy travel through Bangor International Airport. Flybangor.com. Liberty Mutual customized my car insurance, and I saved hundreds. With all the money I saved, I thought I'd buy stilts. Being so tall definitely has its advantages. Oh, wow. Here you go, kiddo. Thanks. Hi, honey, ready to go? Yep. Oh, there it is. There it is. Ah, there we go. I guess it also has some disadvantages. Yes, it does. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. I got help to push back. I got help to push back. Libaldi helps us push back against Bipolar 1. One Steli Prescription Libaldi is proven to treat manic or mixed episodes of Bipolar 1 in adults to help you push back. Elderly patients with dementia have increased risk of death or stroke. Do not take Libaldi if you are taking opioids or are in opioid withdrawal. The semidorphin in Libaldi can cause severe opioid withdrawal that can lead to hospitalization or increased risk of life-threatening overdose. Get emergency help if you have trouble breathing, become very drowsy with slowed or shallow breathing, feel faint, very dizzy or confused, or have a fever, stiff muscles, rash, swollen glands, or problems with your liver, kidneys, heart, or lungs. Other serious side effects may include high cholesterol, weight gain, potentially fatal high blood sugar, uncontrolled body movements, which may be permanent, dizziness upon standing or falls. Are you ready? Ask your doctor about Libaldi. Looking for copay savings? For info, text copay to 45286. We're lucky to live in Maine. We have a wealth of natural resources, hardworking people, and time for the things that matter. Mechanical services is all about Maine, with energy efficiency that protects our environment and helps businesses grow. Preventive maintenance and energy solutions that save money. How Maine is that? Mechanical services, we're everywhere you are in Maine. Many parents and guardians probably remember the nationwide baby formula shortage, and while many factors helped trigger the crisis, the findings from a new audit are putting the Food and Drug Administration in the hot seat over its handling of concerns surrounding the country's largest formula producer prior to the incidents. Fox's Chanley Painter has the story. The results of a new audit reveal failures in the Food and Drug Administration's response to concerns at the country's largest baby formula plant. <laughs> The investigation by the Department of Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General found it took the FDA more than 15 months to forward an email from a whistleblower over conditions at an Abbott Nutrition factory in Michigan. The Office of Inspector General is an independent organization, completely independent of the FDA. The email was sent to the FDA in February of 2021, describing alleged safety violations at the plant. But according to the report, that warning was, quote, 
inadvertently archived and wasn't found until June of 2022. Two babies later died and several more were hospitalized because of a rare bacterial infection after drinking powdered formula made at the Abbott Nutrition Factory in Michigan. The FDA says it can't confirm Abbott's formulas caused those deaths and illnesses. People have to be comfortable with the safety of powder and formula. That facility was then temporarily closed for several months back in February of 2022 with Abbott issuing a massive recall. The aftermath contributing to a nationwide formula shortage that year. We need to have better reporting standards for the public to report to the problems, for the FDA to report its findings when things go wrong, making sure that the inspection process for factories is improved and handled better. FDA officials responding to the audit say they agree with the findings. I'm Chanley Painter, Fox News. As the election season ramps up, voters are scrambling to find reliable political data in real time. But it's growing ever more difficult as deep fakes get more complicated. Fox's Eben Brown has more in this edition of Fox on Tech. The presidential election season is wrapping up and so are the warnings about deep fake technology being used to disrupt the campaign, leaving voters looking for a way to determine source reliability in real time. Alex Fink is the CEO of OtherWeb, which focuses on filtering out fake news. He says ranking sources often comes down to determining motivation. Financial news outlets tend to do really well because they have an incentive not to get things wrong. Social media, on the other hand, the incentive is to get things to be as loud as possible. And this issue isn't going away anytime soon. Academy Award nominee Scarlett Johansson was recently invited to testify before Congress about a deep fake of her voice being used by an AI company, underscoring the difficulty of keeping up with the technology and the danger posed by scammers as AI accelerates threats to the election. The technology has suddenly taken a leap and it's become so good that most people don't realize what it's capable of. And with regulation to regulate deep fakes remaining stalled, some experts now say the best way for folks to protect themselves is through old-fashioned skepticism, with users urged to think critically about how well they know the source of the material and whether it seems too good to be true. Start thinking of audio recordings and video as hearsay, as gossip, something that requires additional verification. Lawmakers with the House AI Committee have already introduced legislation that would protect consumers from deepfakes, but there's no word on when it will come up for a vote. In Miami, Eben Brown, Fox News. All right. Yep, and just so many questions persist with the uh, evolution of AI. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, coming up, we have our full five-day forecast. Important stuff there as well. Indeed, yeah. with us. All right, we've had a lot of rain in the area recently, and we still have a cold front moving through the area today, bringing some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Will the skies clear up, or will we have more rain on the way? I'll have more on that coming right up. HUD is the cottage cheese cottage cheese lovers love. Start with our award-winning country style. It's delicious on its own, or like this. That. Even, sure. Plus, it's got more protein than hummus and less sugar than yogurt. Then there's Hood's flavors. We expertly blend in real fruit or savory herbs for an unbeatable taste combination you can't recreate at home. Mmm, now that's cottage cheese. Hood cottage cheese. Always good, always Hood. Listen up. I devise a plan to find better home internet, guys. Madison, you scout the web for the best deals. Peggy, you monitor our projected data usage. Mm. And Ellen. Avoid that hassle and go with U.S. Cellular Home Internet. No more guesswork, and it is faster than ever. All right, new plan. You sign us up for U.S. Cellular Home Internet. Clipper and I will try it out by streaming the game in our new sports theater. Is that a grill? And a hot tub for you. U.S. Cellular new and improved home internet. Just $34.99 when bundled with a wireless plan. When the acres add up, so does the work. The Kubota LO2 Series is ready for it. Part of the number one rated tractor brand for durability and owner experience, it features powerful, dependable Kubota diesel engines, performance matched attachments, and the versatility to get the job done right. Available at Doors Equipment, 1468 Outer Hammond Street, Bangor.
Hanks Husqvarna is your trusted full-line Husqvarna dealer, offering you everything you need for your outdoor projects. From high-performance lawn tractors and zero-turn mowers to chainsaws, trimmers, battery-powered and powerful snowblowers, we have just what you need. Every piece of equipment is fully set up, serviced, and ready for use by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or new equipment sales, make your way to Hanks Husqvarna in Carmel or Newport. Fox Mondays, it's not about what you know. How many total noodles are there? It's how you think. Do not feel ashamed, you're as stupid as I am. The 1% Club, all new Mondays on Fox. Welcome back, everybody. Varney Ford is bringing tonight's full weather. Varney Ford in Newport gives one full year maintenance on every new and used vehicle they sell. Come visit them and see their huge selection of cars and trucks. They are the nice car and truck people. All right, let's take a look at that weather in the area right now. Looks like we have some scattered showers and thunderstorms moving along a cold front just through the center of Maine. So let's take a look at the, uh, the cold front moving through right now. You can see this long stretch is bringing some scattered showers and thunderstorms to the area, not just for us, but also some thunderstorms in the New York area and Washington as well. We are just now seeing the warm front pass through and the cold front will pass through later tonight, bringing us some high pressure going into tomorrow. So the temperatures right now, looking for in the morning hours, upper 50s and Bangor, a little bit warmer near the coast and Deer Isle, 61 degrees, but looks like much of the area in central Maine is sitting around the mid to upper 50s for tonight and going into tomorrow. It's going to be slightly cooler than it was today, but still pretty comfortable temperatures. Bangor at 72 degrees, a little cooler by the coast and a little bit cooler up north as well. Looks like most of the warmth is sitting right around that Bangor area, but we do have a lot more warmth on the way. Let's take a look at the temperature trend throughout the week. Tomorrow is going to be the coldest temperature we see at 70 degrees and we're going to slightly warm up going into the mid to upper 70s then to the mid 80s by Tuesday and then the mid 90s by Wednesday and Thursday It's going to start feeling like the middle of summer coming Wednesday and Thursday and with that the humidity is going to rise as well with humidity the temperatures that are out there are going to feel hotter than they really are so Tuesday Wednesday Thursday it's going to be very important to have a water on hand and make sure you stay hydrated if you're outside enjoying any outdoor activities now with that we'll have the future forecast showing those showers moving through after that cold front and then we're going to have that clearing where we're going to have a lot of high pressure tomorrow we're going to have sunny skies fair weather nothing in the area is going to be any severe anymore so that's on the bright side for us with the rainfall that we had today looks like the most we got was just near dover foxcroft just under a quarter inch of rain must have had a locally heavy uh, rainstorm come through and that dropped probably a lot over there other than that eastward of dover foxcroft lots of lesser amounts so it looks like none of the the storms today were any severe and didn't really drop as much rainfall as we expected. Wind speeds, though, so, uh, from the southwest, Bar Harbor has a southwest wind, 7 miles per hour, and then pretty calm in this Bangor region. We have some very light and variable winds with zeros on the board near Bangor. Taking a look at into tonight, low of 59 degrees. We may have some thunderstorms still moving through the area early on, and then mostly cloudy skies will follow up after that. And then going into tomorrow, we'll have a high of 70 degrees after that cold front passes through. Maybe a few showers early on in the morning, but then the rest of the day, decreasing clouds with winds from the north at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Going into your extended forecast, looks like Sunday is going to be a beautiful day for Father's Day with a high of 75 and sunny, and then some more rain may be on the way Monday with warmer temperatures Tuesday and Wednesday in the mid to upper 90s. All right, thank you, Chase. Well, earlier today, we were live on the road in Glenburn, and we have some stories to bring you from that community. Ella Fitzgerald, Machine Gun Kelly, and Luther Vandross are Perform, all are all performers connected by a common thread. They all had impressive runs on an amateur night at the Apollo. And now a Glenburn woman is joining their ranks. Our Devin Dagnall tells us more in this week's Destination Devin. <laughs> realize we were going to start off with something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Last Tuesday, Krista Jakaki made the nearly eight-hour drive from Glenburn to Harlem to perform an amateur night at the Apollo, and it was definitely worth it. Krista finished in second place of the overall night and is now moving on to the semifinalist round next week. So I sent a video audition. It was kind of on a whim. <laughs> Didn't expect much. And later that afternoon, one of the show coordinators got back to me and congratulations, 
like you to sing on June 12th. I was born by the river. It comes with no surprise that Krista has been performing ever since she was a child, with her first competitive performance at just six years old. <laughs> it was like the Little Miss Lincoln pageant or something. <laughs> And uh, that was the first time I performed live. Over the years, Krista continued pursuing music through various gig work and bands, performing with friends and family. My parents were musicians, or are. My mom still sings and plays guitar, and my dad was a singer and a bass player, so, so I grew up in it. Krista says she's never had any aspirations of getting a big break or making a career out of her music. She simply does it because it feels like what she needs to do. Yeah, everybody has something they're passionate about and willing to do crazy things for. This happens to be mine. If you would like to support Krista's trip back to the Apollo or follow her journey on social media, links can be found on our website, foxbangor.com. Devin Dagnall, ABC7, Fox 22 News. round of performances at the Apollo. Well, the town of Glenburn may be a small one, but their community has big things planned. Our Callie Warren takes an inside look at what folks can expect. The group's worked hard for 16 years. The annual Glenburn Community Festival takes place this weekend. Organizers say it's a chance for the whole community to come together. You try to mix up the food and you try to mix up the music so that it's kind of reaching hopefully everybody to bring everybody, like you said, together from the neighborhoods, from the community. It's really kind of amazing, this small town back back in the early 60s when we first moved here, was uh, the whole community was centered around the lake. Uh, since then we've added a lot of uh, new businesses in town. Uh, it's just this town has really come, come behind us and supported the event. It's Everybody's welcome. welcome. More the merrier. The theme of the festival is then and now. A 1937 Chevy fire truck will be leading in Friday night's Glow Parade. The truck is dedicated to the late Paul Allen, a Glenburn firefighter, and will be driven by his son. I'm sure Paul's looking down and thinking that this is a great thing. I'm sure he's very, very proud to have his son occupy the front seat there. And the truck runs beautifully after being restored by community members. Organizers say a new monument celebrating area veterans will be coming to the town soon. Now we want to honor all veterans in Glenburn. Saturday's parade will be led by veteran Bill Dean, who is representing Maine Troop Greeters. I've been a Troop Greeter since Desert Storm, which is over 30 years. And I don't mind, they asked me to lead the parade, and I said, yes, I'd be glad to do that. Community members look forward to the festival. So how many festivals, parades have you gone to? All of them. You always get to go get a funnel cake, and the fireworks are always a great way to finish off the weekend. In Glenburn, Callie Warren, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. And in addition to the community festival, a lot of other events are coming to Glenburn, including live music by the lake. We'll be kicking off our Lakeside Summer Music Series starting next Thursday. So I feel like this festival is kind of like the kickoff to the summer events for the little town of Glenburn, but we have a lot going on. The Glenburn Summer Music Series in Lakeside Landing Park will be taking place on Thursdays throughout the summer at 530. The concerts are free of charge. Parking is limited, but lawn space is plentiful, so bring a blanket or chair to relaxing. To relax in, entertainment is planned to start at 5.30 every night. Local vendors will begin selling food starting at 5. For a full list of concert lineups, you can visit our website, foxbangor.com. Certainly plenty of great stuff going on in Glenburn. Kind of a summer destination there. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know, a lot of big things happening for, for a little community, and we'd love to see that. Yeah, and we wish them the very best of luck with their community festival tomorrow. Yes, we do. It looks like it's going to be a great one. Yeah, it does. All right. Well, folks, stay with us. Sports is next. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Excuse me, could you tell me how to get to Down East Toyota? Oh, that's easy. All roads lead to Down East. 
Wherever you are in Maine, come check out Toyota's lineup of all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive vehicles. Whether you're headed up to camp or down the highway, go to DowneastToyota.com to find the perfect ride with rates as low as 1.99% on select models. So are you for hire? Nope, I got a day job. That guy looks awfully familiar. No matter where you mow in Maine, all roads lead to Down East on Wilson Street in Brewer. Someone needs to customize and save hundreds with Liberty Mutual. Wait, there's an elevator? Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, chances are you have a lot of questions. Norm Prouty has answers. Learn some tips and tricks and explore some beautiful new homes on the market. The Norm Prouty and Danelle Baker Real Estate Show, Sunday mornings at 8.30 on Fox 22. Down to the shore or up to the mountains. Before you can get there, you've got to get here. Your Ford dealer's Great American Sales Event with special 4th of July deals. Like select F-150 trucks with 3.9% financing for 60 months, plus up to $500 bonus cash. So get the truck you've always wanted. Ford F-Series, including the all-new F-150 and Super Duty. Drive home select Ford F-150 models with 3.9% APR for 60 months, plus up to $500 bonus cash for qualified buyers. Durable, sturdy, stylish. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Triumph Professional Cleaning Services, providing outstanding commercial cleaning services to eastern and central Maine. Triumph Professional Cleaning, creating an environment of cleanliness. Welcome back in, everyone. Thanks for staying with us. The Celtics trying to close out the NBA Finals tonight, and, well, they put forth probably their worst effort in months. They're losing by nearly 40. The starters were pulled with minutes to go in the third quarter, so we had about 14 minutes of garbage time. We will have all of those lowlights coming up at 11 on ABC. Staying on the basketball court now, some good news. One of Bangor's own is heading to the Division I level. Bangor native Landon Clark, who played his freshman and sophomore seasons with the Rams before going prep with St. Paul's School in New Hampshire, has committed to Princeton University with the Ivy League, as he posted on his Twitter account, or X, formerly known as Twitter, earlier today. He also played with Maine United for the past two seasons, helping them to a Peach Jam championship appearance this summer. Princeton has been to the NCAA tournament five times since the turn of the century, including a Sweet 16 appearance in 2023 after upsetting two-seeded Arizona in the first round. Big congrats to him. Let's head down to Bucksport for not one, but two state championship previews. For the second year in a row, both Bucks baseball and softball are your C-North champions. Starting with baseball, they are regional champs for the third year in a row as they head to Saturday's state final against Sacopee Valley. The Bucks entered as the fourth seed and have really turned it on, especially on the mound. Just five hits and three earned runs so far this postseason. Senior ace Gavin Holyoke will start Saturday and has, as has been the case all year. The team hopes he can once again provide the squad with a spark. The pitching is what starts the game. So when you come out and you have a good game and you start the game really tough, just it boosts everyone. Gavin, I'm so confident that he will be able to hit his spots and have the good velo that he needs. He'll have the control and he's ready. I just take it one pitch at a time and one batter at a time. It doesn't really phase me at all. I just need to go out there, do my job, throw strikes, and if they hit the ball, I know our defense is going to do their job and help us out. When the Bucs won the Gold Glove two years ago, it was the first in team history. So with a chance to win their second, the sizable senior class has the chance to leave behind a huge legacy, making this ring potentially even sweeter. That, along with how close the class is with one another. Being a part of it my sophomore year was, was pretty awesome, especially being best friends with all those seniors. But to be able to do it with all of my best friends that I've been growing up with since since I was in kindergarten would be even better. Winning states is always fun, but being able to do it your senior year and um, being able to have two rings and the only two in, you know, program history, I mean, that's nothing more you can ask for. And Bucksport softball is back to states as back-to-back -back Class C North champions. They will be facing Halldale in a rematch of last year's final. This time around, the Bucks feel they know Halldale a bit better, not just from last season, but from playing them in a preseason exhibition, which they won. Doesn't make them feel at all secure, but more ready for what they know the Bulldogs will bring. 
I like that we are playing a team that we know. We know what they do, like their pitcher. We've seen it, which makes, I think, us feel a little better, and I think it make, makes us more ready to play. We just went in knowing that if we could do it now, we could definitely do it again. We can't let ourselves get down and expect Haldale to not be as good as they are. Expect them to hit well, field well, score. We just need to play better than they do. From losing in last year's final to switching coaches midseason, they have not let much phase them on the field this year. Going 18-1 and so far, with all of the adversity they've faced plus their hard work, a state title would be ultimately a happy ending, especially for their seniors. We have been pushing for it this whole season and to finally get it. It's just, it would be perfect, perfect way to end senior year for our seniors because they've worked so hard for this. Just, it's going to be an amazing moment. It would feel really good. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> It'll feel nice. Baseball plays at 1 p.m. at Mahaney Diamond at UMaine and across the lot. Softball is at 3.30. That's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. An official message from Medicare. A new law is helping us save more money on prescription drugs. Maybe you can save too. With Medicare's Extra Help program, our drug premiums are zero and our out-of-pocket costs are low. I enrolled and I'm saving money. If you're single and make less than $23,000 a year or are a married couple making less than $31,000, you may qualify and save. Even if you don't think you qualify, it pays to find out. Go to ssa.gov slash extra help. Higher shipping rates may be the cost of doing business, but at what cost? Turn shipping to your advantage with low-cost ground shipping from the United States Postal Service. A new deck is a great, affordable way to improve your home or camp. Hammond Lumber Company can help you create the perfect deck for your outdoor space. Visit Hammond's product showroom and explore their extensive range of decking and railing options. Your Hammond sales rep will be happy to help you with your materials and design choices, and Hammond delivers from any of their 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Make this the year you enjoy that new deck you've always wanted. It starts when you bring your vision to Hammond Lumber Company. It was one thing when my mom got Alzheimer's, but then we started noticing things that seemed off. She developed agitation that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. Sometimes she'd fidget with her fingers, get suddenly overwhelmed, and even throw things. And that was just never her. So we asked her doctor what else we could do. Rick Zolte is the only FDA-approved medication proven to reduce agitation symptoms that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. Rick Zolte can cause serious side effects. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke, report fever, stiff muscles, and confusion, which can be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death, weight gain, increased cholesterol, low white blood cells, unusual urges, dizziness on standing, falls, seizures, trouble swallowing, or sleepiness may occur. Rexalti help reduce my mom's symptoms. Take action for your loved one. Ask their doctor about Rexalti. Jamie and Corinne are back. Season seven. With the greatest songs. I got a feeling. And bestest yeah. prize. Yeah. Beat Shazam, all new Tuesdays on Fox and watch anytime on Hulu. The Quiz with Balls, all new Tuesdays at 9, 8 central on Fox. Welcome back. PetSmart announces its Team USA collection ahead of the 2024 Summer Olympic Games in Paris. The oh, pet retailer announced on Wednesday that it will be releasing a collection of Team USA pet toys and apparel. The collection features tracksuits, hats, and even plushy gold medals. In addition to the Team USA Olympic collection, the pet company will host a one-day only Team USA themed doggy day camp experience on August 8th, featuring exercise, games, and treats for all pups. Visitors making their way to Yellowstone National Park are trying to catch a glimpse of the park's latest celebrity, a white buffalo calf. The rare baby bison is said to be sacred in Native American culture, symbolizing better times ahead. Visitors are trying to get a look at this positive omen in the park. 
So I, I saw a story and I believe I saw it on Facebook about the white buffalo that was just born in the park. And it would be phenomenal to be able to see it. Um, I understand culturally how important this is for the Native Americans. And it, it would just be something special to be able to see. Okay. So we're driving and my daughter-in-law says, oh, I think I see buffalo and there's a baby maybe but it's white and I said oh it might be the albino bison and she's like oh it's a rock. <laughs> well the calf has been given a name but that name hasn't been revealed yet. A celebration of the white calf's birth will be held on June 26th. Hundreds of people are now cycling through the state of Maine all in a bid to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for the American Lung Association. The 40th annual trek across Maine is not a race. It's a 180 mile trek and it kicked off early this morning. Asia Reed spoke with some trekkers today. 750 trekkers pedaled through this event and some folks here today have participated in every trek for the last 40 years. After the fifth year, I thought, oh, I can do it again. And then it became 10 and then it became 15. And here we are at 40. Besides Dale Martin, there's one more trekker here today that's been biking the event since the 80s, Scott Cowger. It's a beautiful ride. There are a lot of hills, so it's a lot of ups and downs, uh, but I just take my time and enjoy it. Myself and Scott Cowger have done it every year, and I think we're always waiting to see who's going to be the first one to drop out. We are going three, two, one. One, have a safe ride. The goal is to raise $750,000 for the American Lung Association, which will be put towards research to end lung disease. It's a cause close to those who've been affected. I have a sister that died of lung cancer. I have a, a very close friend who died of mesothelioma and a family member who died of mesothelioma. This trek started almost 40 years ago, a time when things looked very different. Back in 1985, you could smoke at a restaurant, you could smoke in a bar. Thanks to the American Lung Association's efforts, that has since been outlawed. This truck takes place for the next two days and organizers say they're confident that they'll hit that $750,000 goal. Here's hoping everybody has a smooth and safe ride absolutely. and that they actually absolutely like just punch right through that goal. Yeah. Yeah. And so impressive to hear from the two people who have been participating for 40 years. Yeah. And you love the friendly competition they've got going on. I of course. Her, her comment. We're just waiting to see who drops out who first. Who drops out first. Yeah. Always yeah. a little friendly competition, but it seems like folks all there have a personal connection as many right. of us do. And so you just hope that they make their goal. Yeah. All for such a great cause. Like absolutely. Yeah. Alrighty, folks, well, that is going to do it for us. From everyone here at Fox 22 News, take care and have a great night. Good night, everyone. It's a culinary battle of the ages. Millennium! Gen Z. Gen Z. Oh, uh, which generation is going to win it all?